Oh, hello. You caught me doing a little bit of FT8 on my radio there. Hold on, we'll take care of that. Ah, that's a lot better. Hello, my name is Rolly, ZL1BQD. Welcome. Have you ever considered activating a one-man day expedition uh, to an exotic place, such as an island out in the Pacific? Well then, you've come to the right spot. Uh, you know the draw now. Pull up a chair, grab a cup of coffee. Come on, let's talk about it, shall we? In my previous videos on one man de expeditioning, we discussed the licensing requirements to operate ham radio in my first video and how to go about getting that license in my second video. Now you'll find the links to those videos in the description below and I invite you to have a look at those. Yes, we've instantly transported ourselves out to the Maldives. I couldn't help it. <laughs> in this video, I want to talk about some of the logistics involved in putting together a one-man day expedition. Remember, this is not a multi-operator, multi-transmitter, multi-antenna, major day expedition requiring hundreds of thousands of dollars, with instant online logging and pilots and major sponsorships. Such a venture is far and away uh, much different to one-man de-expeditioning and beyond the scope of this uh, video. So having taken care of the paperwork, well, what next? One major consideration is preparing for any medical and health events. It is safe to say that you're on your own and you must be able to take care of yourself. All of the Pacific Islands are to be considered tropical, and so the climate will always be hot. It's either wet and hot, or dry and hot. Dehydration is a real problem and must be treated seriously. Please do not drink the local water or well water, however. It will make you sick for sure. Bottled water is readily available in most places. Just check that it has not been opened <laughs> before you buy it. Bottled water can be a little difficult to get in some areas of, say, Papua New Guinea and Solomon Islands. And so make sure you, uh, if all else fails, and boil the water thoroughly uh, if you have no other alternative. Time for a quick change of scenery again, once again in the Maldive Islands. Now, if you're on any medication at all, then you need to meet uh, with your doctor and discuss your travel plans. You'll need to take more than enough uh, of your medication with you. Uh, don't rely on being able to get any medications anywhere in the Pacific. It is highly unlikely uh, it can be found. Even, even if you could find it, it would be extremely expensive. And while we're talking about medication, please ask your doctor to write up a certificate for your medications. Uh, that will become essential if you're asked to, about your medication upon entry into the, any, any of the Pacific uh, countries. Without the certificate, you'll certainly risk the, uh, having all of your medications confiscated and destroyed. And <laughs> that's not a great idea now, is it? One of the greatest risks you face when visiting some of the Pacific Islands is malaria and daggy fever. Papua New Guinea, Solomon Islands and Timor Leste are classic examples. So please talk to your doctor about a preventative course of, say, uh, doxycycline or similar. A good insect repellent is a must. However, I still recommend wearing long trousers and long sleeve shirt even though it is very hot, particularly if you're visiting some of the jungle areas of, say, Papua New Guinea or the Solomon Islands. You'll also need to pack medications such as Diastop to take care of stomach problems and diarrhoea should that become a problem. Again, speak to your doctor. Now, bull ants and scorpions can be a problem in some islands, 
and a bite from them can be very serious indeed. Any small cuts and abrasions need to be treated immediately with a good antiseptic cream. Otherwise, infections will set in very quickly indeed. The Maldives, Samoa, Fiji are no problem, so you may want to start your Pacific ventures with uh, these islands before venturing out to the others. So the message is to be careful and look after yourself. Now before closing off uh, this video, I want to discuss uh, travel insurance. Please check with your provider the details concerning emergency evacuations. I've had to have uh, three such uh, occasions in my Pacific uh, adventures to date. The first one was due to civil unrest, and I, as a visitor to that country, was in a, in a dangerous position, and so I had to leave immediately for my own health. The second was a medical evacuation where I had to get back to New Zealand quickly because of a scorpion bite. And the third was due to a volcanic eruption threat. I was notified by a New Zealand government that, I, uh, that it would be a good idea to get back to New Zealand as soon as possible uh, before all flights around the uh, Indonesia area were cancelled due to volcanic activity. Now, these are just three examples where it is important to have adequate insurance, otherwise it could become a very costly exercise indeed. Well, it all sounds like doom and gloom, doesn't it? But I can assure you that it's not. The beautiful sights, the nice warm weather, the fun and the adventure all make up for these essential precautions. And then, of course, there's the DX. In my next video of this uh, one-man de-expedition series, we talk about equipment and some of the technical bits and pieces. Please subscribe below and press the little bell. That way I can let you uh, get in first <laughs> when the next video has been released. So until then... Bye for now.